Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. To some of you, and peace out to the rest of you. Black Quarter Sign of Black, and again, asking you to hit that uh, like. I mean, asking you to hit the share button. If you've hit share or like or subscribe, I thank you from the bottom of my black heart. But the share button is important because it benefits us, and the message is more important than the messenger. So thank you if you hit that. Um, you saw the title, and I'm going to explain it by giving the two extremes. Then I'm going to propose a middle ground as a solution. One extreme is uh, what you could call the pro-black extreme. That is where some people respond to white supremacy and white supremacist uh, colorism and eugenics by saying, we're going to go the opposite route. We're going to breed black people to have the darkest skin, nappiest hair, widest nose and biggest lips. Um, And that is because they're reacting, as I've said, to white supremacy. They're saying, um, no, 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 no. We're not going to go for this European beauty standard. So we're going to go against it in our mating preferences. But what that means is everybody that's not black is an enemy to black people. That's one that's one of the assumptions. And um, another weakness in this is that it ignores the natural diversity of the African race. Because Africa is very big and it's, I mean, it's, the land area is equivalent to the land area of the moon, to be honest with you. And so because of the different climates in the continent and the different amounts of sunlight exposure throughout the year, there have been different phenotypes, different nose sizes, lip sizes, hair textures and skin shades without outside admixture. So the pro-black extreme ignores this and it eliminates many black folks and I was one of those that got eliminated. Now, I understood it in my case because I'm pretty unrecognizable to many of us. However, there are many others of us who are more recognizable but still get excluded by this logic because they're still recognizable as us. They're just light skinned or they just have thin noses or they just don't have any lips. And, and they are looked at upon as being insufficiently black to qualify to ever marry and have their own kids. This would severely limit our population growth in a world that's already hostile to us. Um, so that's one weakness. And the other thing too is that because of this idea, it has allowed many trifling sapphires to bank on the fact that there, were gonna be, there was going to always be some man for them, no matter what bad decisions they made in life, and no matter how bad of a deal it was for these men, there would always be someone to bank, someone for them to bank on. So it gave a lot of trifling sisters a safety net they didn't deserve. Okay, so I'm going to get the worst nigga I can find when I'm 16. And all the way up until I'm 29, I'm going to screw nothing but them. And I'm going to have some babies by them. When I am big and unattractive and I've got these kids that need raising because the dads can't do it, even if they want to, because black fathers are still involved usually. But, you know, I want a better life for them, for them babies. Then I can count on somebody who's going to be with me because uh, I'm black, he black, his mama black. As uh, Obsidian has said, and I want to give a shout out to him for it. This gives them that extreme. Now, the opposite extreme is the uh, anti-black colorist extreme. This is rarer among people, but it does exist usually among some of the teenage boys who might be getting just the beginning of the red pill awareness. Now, why do I mention this? Because here's why. These guys, let's say between like 16 and 19, are still under the heavy influence because they're minors. They're under the heavy influence of the elder women in the family. And that is where colorism is perpetu uh, perpetuated. See, every black woman's not colorist. The problem is that the ones who are colorists don't necessarily outgrow it just because they got older. So they perpetuate it, and this is why it gets passed on to teenage boys, preteen boys. But then later on, it gets done away with. The boys have to outgrow it when they become men. If they're not going to outgrow it, they know they can't perpetuate it to anyone else because hell, who gonna listen to them anyway? They're black men. This is a matriarchy. So... But in, the, in these formative years, there are guys who uh, still have this idea. And we would like to be able to bypass any black man having um, colorist ideas at any stage in their life. 
but definitely by the time they start their teens. We'd like that to be done away with. Well, the problem is that if you get the first little bit of red pill knowledge as a black man to one of these guys, but their mothers have already put some of the colorism in them, then they would say, okay, so I'm gonna go and get the first light skin exotical because the black bitch is a problem. So then they start turning down the African woman, turning away from her like she's an enemy, even though she may not be, depending on where she's from. And they start turning away from the Afro-Latina because she's still black. And they try to find anything with light skin and straight hair that's not black. That sets them up too because the B1 all right about another thing and that is that a lot of other people of color are still enemies. Not all, but a lot of them. So the B1 extreme says that everybody, or the pro-black extreme I should say, is that everybody else is an enemy. All of them. Everybody that's not black is an enemy. And as a matter of fact, uh, we need to breed ourselves uh, and, and breed out a lot of the, the, the diluted Negroes, so to speak. We can't have them anymore. Can't afford them. And then the opposite is every black woman is your enemy. And the further away you can get from black, the better. So, and here's the middle ground I propose. The pro-black extreme says uh, that the Chinese, the Arab, Persian, Afghan, Pakistani, Indian, the Southeast Asian, like the Malaysians and the Indonesians, Filipinos, Cambodians, Thais, um, the Latin American, um, the, anybody that's half black is an enemy, is not one of us, um, and they can't be a good spouse. The, um, the opposite extreme is any black woman from anywhere is, is a bad spouse because she's black. Right off the bat. So the middle ground is where most of us hover around, but we have not proposed this as a solution to the extremes. I'm going to go ahead and get to that. Then I'm going to tell you why I said it. Look, on one hand, the B want to write about a lot of other people being our enemies. They're wrong about everybody being our enemy. That's not possible. What we should understand, though, is this. The middle ground is to look at the woman, look at her culture and what her culture's attitude is towards blackness, not just an individual attitude. What is a culture's attitude? And here's why I say it. If she's OK with you being just as jet black, uh, wide nose, big lipped and everything else, she's fine with it. You got to understand her people or not. If you have kids with her. First off, if you marry her without kids. Her people are still going to write out of the will. So automatically, they're going to try to further impoverish you just because of that. Secondly, if you have kids uh, or you don't have them, again, the family's not, her family's not going to help you with them babies. You need to understand that. Now, as this uh, uh, anti-race mixing um, campaign goes further among black folks, you're going to have many of us who are on the other extreme in your own families, the pro-black extreme, and they're not going to help you with your little mixed kids either. So then it's just you and her that got to do everything for your kid with no outside extended family support because to her family, the kid's too black and to your family, the kid's not black enough. But also, there's going to come a clash if her people are not for black folks. There's going to come a clash between us and them. I know this because in the black Muslim community, we're already beginning to clash with these folks and it's spilling over into the black non-Muslim community. That's why many of you were hostile with these Arabs. We started that. We were the ones that got on their case first. I'm not saying it to brag. I'm saying it because we had to do it. We prayed next to them and then they turned to smoke cigarettes. We had to get on that ass. We prayed next to them and they left the prayer and went across the uh, street from the masjid and opened up the liquor store. We had to get on their ass. <laughs> so we started that. And you're right for, for carrying it on. Good job. But what happens when you mix with these folks that don't look at us as equals? One day you're going to have to tell your wife her people suck. And if she's not going to side with you against her people because they suck, because they sided with the oppressor, you don't need her. I don't care how hard it is for her to do. You don't need her. Some women will do it, but most women, they'll just turn around and go right back to their own people and take your kids with them. Now you don't have control over your kids because you stayed in the West and she left you. She's back with her people and you can't protect your kids from the way that her, your in-laws are going to treat them because they still niggas. You get it? This is a, a real 
this is a real risk. On the flip side, though, you can't sit up here and say, I'm going to keep it black, but then Sapphire in the West is never going to treat you the way that you should be treated because you're just never going to be attractive enough to her, really. And the whole time she's going to talk about you don't like black women, and really she don't like you because you just ain't never going to be Superman enough for her. That's the flip side. So you stay with her, but then you turn away from these other women that were not enemies and their people were not enemies to you and you lose out. Where do you go then? The middle ground is you give some of the Western sisters a chance, but if they're treating you like they treat the majority of brothers, you say, nope, done. Then you leave them. Then you look at Afro-Latinas and see if you're their type. You look at certain different parts of the continent and see which ones of them like you the most. And you look at Southeast Asia. And Southeast Asia is the exception to this other people of color or our enemies. That's the exception right there. If you're Christian, you'll do well in the Philippines, Cambodia, Laos, sometimes Thailand, from what they're telling me. If you're Muslim, you can find your wife that's, that's cool with your blackness and may even prefer that in Malaysia, the southern Philippines, and Indonesia. And maybe Brunei as well. But Brunei's got a small population. You're very unlikely to meet anyone from there because of how small the country and the population are. But I mean, even from that region, you're not the enemy there. And you're not inferior and you're not less desirable there. These are the middle grounds, guys. Propose these as solutions before, um, before we get split apart into those that are like, keep it black and keep it black, black, keep it blurper black. And everybody else is our enemies. And matter of fact, nigga, you ain't black enough to be having babies with us. And the opposite extreme, which is, let's go everywhere but the black woman. The black woman is a Klingon bitch because she's black. The problem is her skin color, hair texture, and her nose and her lips. She's ugly. Because she's a man. That's the opposite extreme. These two extremes are very childish. But they are, they actually are there. Now, the second extreme I mentioned is very rare, but it does exist. And I'm afraid that these young cats won't outgrow it as quickly as we did. And that's why I wanted us to do away with it. Take that middle ground, propose that as a solution. Now, the last thing I'm gonna do, because I've already taken enough time. Last thing I wanna do at this point is I wanna tell you why it is that uh, I've said that we're gonna have a clash with these other groups of people that are, that are in fact enemies, or even just, if they don't hate us, they just don't look at us as equals. I know that this clash is gonna come for this reason. One, like I said, it was already, it's already there in the black Muslim community. We're already at these folks' throats. And, and But the other reason I know is this. This is a racial conflict. They got issues with us because we're black with big lips, wide noses, nappy hair. And then all the other issues are secondary. It's not color. I mean, it's not culture. It's color. Then it's culture. That's how they feel. They tell you, no, it's not the color, it's the culture. No, it's, it's, it's white brainwashing that makes it the color for them. Then the culture is something they can use later on. Meanwhile, their cultures actually do suck, and I know this. Hell, I'm living between them. So, this is a racial conflict. In Bosnia, before the conflict broke out, the Muslims had already lost their religion. They were, the Muslim women were marrying Christian men, which is not allowed, regardless of our opinions about the matter. It's not allowed. The Muslims were eating pork and washing it down with vodka. They had completely assimilated culturally, lost their, their distinction. The only thing left were their names being different. At some point, the Serbians still started to go after them. Now, they're the same race. They're both Eastern Europeans, speak the same language. Yet and still. Wait, no, I'm not sure if they spoke the same language or not, actually. But what I do know was that they grew up together. They had become, you know, bosom buddies and you couldn't always tell them apart. And then fast forward and uh, all of a sudden, best friends are looking to kill each other now because the Christians hated the Muslims. The Muslims did not start that conflict. And they're the same race. You strip them naked, you don't know who's who till they tell you. It still happened. What the hell do you think is going to be the case even if you marry? Not only even if you marry, but especially if you marry these women from cultures who look down on you. That's not going to prevent the conflict. It's going to accelerate it. 
That's how. And when that conflict does come and you got to sit up here and you got to say some nasty stuff or do some harsh things to the men from these other communities, can you trust her to side with you against them because you're right and they're wrong? Sometimes you can, but a lot of times you won't be able to. <laughs> it's not going to happen. She may love you, but that doesn't mean she's willing to side against her own people the way we've been willing to do. But the difference will be that it's wrong for us to side against our own people because we were the victims. She will be willing to side against you and not her own people, even though you're still the victim and they were wrong. That's the difference. Morally speaking, they don't compare. Do you understand now why it is that I had to record this? Choose the ones that choose you, but from the communities and, and, and peoples and cultural groups that do not have an issue with you based on your blackness. That's the middle ground. Propose this. Thank you for listening. I greatly appreciate your patience. Black Heart Sign and Black Out. Assalamu alaikum and black male power.